when I'm in the harbor on the kayak and there's either wind or the current's moving fast, um, I can't stay in one spot with the kayak. And so I decided that I would instead, uh, when I want to just fish docks, I would get a flow tube. So this just came today. It should be a Cumberland uh, float tube. And I would use, like I said, I'll use that instead of the uh, kayak when I just want to fish the docks. When I want to fish out in the open waters, um, still use the kayak because I can put the anchor down with the float tube. This would be the best option. So let's just see what this thing looks like. box within a box. Fabulous. So it's a Cumberland or a classic accessories Cumberland. And this is not the English version of it. Side? So I'll take it out. Let's get this thing out of the main box. Alright, get that out of here. Alright, there we go. Alright, so one thing, one thing that made me really want to get this one versus some other ones is that when we take it out, we'll see, but the seat is already pre-padded. Some of the other ones have uh, inflatable um, tubes or inflatable cushions that you put in there and zip in. I don't like that. I like the, uh, these are foam pads in there already installed. Then also the seat is raised. Uh, you don't sit in the water supposedly. We have yet to find, yet to test that and find that out. But uh, it also has, again, larger carrying capacity pockets on both sides, um, and then a very supposedly a sturdy bottom, very uh, thick uh, material on the bottom versus some other ones. And from all the reviews I saw, it has uh, less propensity to uh, get leaks or punctures. Uh, it has. Again, two drink holders, two rod holders. I don't know where the rod holders are. I can't, couldn't see them online, couldn't see them in the pictures. So um, if the rod holders aren't in good positions, I'm prepared to uh, make, some, make a custom uh, rod holder that'll attach to the side D loops here and on the left hand side, because I can't, I'm right handed, so I cast on the side. So I'll have the rod holders over there. But uh, let's, let's open this thing up and see what we got here. I can't cut in a straight line, but that's okay. All right, some paperwork. Don't really need that at the moment, so we'll put that aside. Some other stuff, brochure. And these are the PVC pieces that go into this front part. We may actually, we may use them. We may actually go by thicker gauge PVC. I don't know yet, we'll see. All right, here's the apron piece, the netting piece. Let's get this out of the box. Really nice, so, oh, I need that. That has the uh, middle piece that connects those two PVC pieces and puts them in as one. So these actually will go like this. And then slide in to here and fit into those pockets on the tube. And then this is a Boston bladder pad. So these are a little patch. All right, let's open this thing up. Is this gonna be easy? Yes, nice and easy. Take that out. Okay, so that's the seat. This is what I was talking about regarding the seat. Really, really thick cushion on the, both the seat and the back. So that is really what made me decide to get this one over the other ones is that, again, really thick pad uh, for the backrest and definitely, dude, this, this pad for the seat is like six inches thick of thick foam. That's awesome. Definitely 
better than the other ones I was looking at. Let's unfold, get this unfolded. There we go. So that's, for the most part, looking good so far. It's not long, looks great. Ooh, it has pockets on the back. That's excellent. Adjustable side straps so you can adjust the uh, reclining position of the seat. So that's good. Most likely gonna have it something like right there. And some of the, some of the comments I saw in the reviews say that, you know, if you have the seat's sitting too far forward, you slip off the front, whatever. So, so we'll have to figure that one out once we get in the water, but that's awesome. Um, again, one of the first things I notice, now that I have it opened up, which is great, is a number of the other float tubes, they actually have the uh, bladders or the inflatable bladders separate. So outside, you actually have to put them in first, inflate a little bit to fit it in, and then consistently keep inflating it and do it proper. That way it inflates right. But with this one, these bladders are pre-installed. So it looks like you just have to get these popped out and figure that out. So I'll look at the instruction in a second. Just looking at how this is done. And these are the uh, backpack straps. So these will clip to those D loops right there. And then, actually it'll clip onto this one and that one, so we can, you know, for transportation, or put it on as a backpack, so that's pretty cool. Um, all right, let's look at the instructions, see what we're supposed to do in terms of inflation. Because I don't know if you were supposed to put this in first or what. Let's see here. Inflation, do not use that. Just check for leaks before using. How are we supposed to check for leaks before using? I guess you have to inflate it first, duh. All right, partially deflate if leaving in the sun. Okay, let's see here. All right, we got that stuff. Okay, how to inflate your float tube bladders. All right, first, float tube bladders are designed to be inflated by foot or hand pump your float tube as Boston type valves for easy inflation and deflation. The valve is constructed of three parts, one, two, three. So one, two, let's see here, is this unscrew? So this, okay, so this unscrews out of there. But then this, sh this should be actually come out too, right? Okay, cool, so I guess we'll all right, to inflate, the middle part B must be screwed tightly to the bladder. Okay, so I just unscrewed what we have to screw back in. That's great. <laughs> Duh. All right. Excellent, okay. Must be screwed in tightly. To the upper cap must be removed from the middle valve in order to inflate. Okay, check, that's done. Let's see. Inflating and assembling your float tube. Place your float tube flat on the floor with pockets facing up. Okay, so it's turned this way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it real quick and be right back so we're on the same diagram. Okay, so now that we're turning the correct direction of these instructions, let's do this. Okay, inflate the two pontoon bladders to about 30%, just enough to hold their shape. Okay, so I, let's do that. I don't, I didn't buy the uh, the hand pump that came with it. It was an extra 22 bucks and I decided why do that? Uh, because I have a blow up mattress pump. Um, if this doesn't work, we can always buy the, the hand pump afterwards. And um, if you buy it, if you buy the hand pump separately, it's actually only $20 compared to if you buy it with this included, it's 22. So you save a couple bucks by um, purchasing it separately. But again, I don't have, if you have a mattress blow up pump, it works. So let's just blow, blow this up to about 30% to start. It blows up fast. I don't really know what 30% is, but we'll guesstimate right here. 
All right, we'll do that. Okay, that's this side. These actually don't screw in that easily. All right, there's that side. All right, let's get this side blown up now. Oh, this is easy with electric pump. So fast. Oh my gosh. All right, that should be about 30%. Now we close it for now. All right, let's see what next. All right, check the bladders by unzipping the pontoons. Check the bladders by unzipping the pontoons. The bladder should lie flat, untwisted, and centered underneath the pontoon pole. And make sure the rip and grip tabs A and B. Attach the bladder pontoon over the line. Okay. Okay, so what I didn't realize when I first started doing it is that there's Velcro on this piece up front. You'll see in the instructions that there's a rip and grip tab, so A and B. So on A, it's these right here. B, these right here, it's not, this doesn't like, it's not two separate compartments. This compartment actually, here, I'll stick my hand through. This compartment actually goes all the way through to this side, and you can see my finger. And the actual Velcro that that's supposed to grip to is the other side of this piece. So it sticks to the Velcro on there. I thought it was actually two separate compartments and like on here, it's supposed to stick to there, but it actually sticks to the other bladder. And I don't quite know how to do that unless you fill it up more. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill it up more and see if we can, we'll see if we can actually connect this. I imagine we have to zip it up a little bit, so I'll zip this up a little bit right there. And do the same thing on this side. It says make sure that the bladders aren't twisted. So did that. Zip this up a little bit more. Alright. Cool, so that's done. Now we'll go ahead and inflate both sides just a little more and see if we can get those two Velcro pieces to latch up front. It definitely inflates from the, from the left side to the right side first can't get it to fill the other side so we'll just have to make do all right so I'm just pushing down on here to get the air to go that way into this compartment up here and so that tip the tip of this bladder is now about right here so I'm gonna go inflate that side a little more and see if we can get those two to connect Not sure if this is really necessary where they really have to connect, but because it says so, that's what my goal is. Let's see if we can do that. All right, again, push this down to get all that air to go up to the front and see. Okay, those are not sure exactly how firm and connected they are, but. All right, those are connected now up at the front. Let's see this. Okay, that's connected, that's connected. All right, we're good there. Okay. Make sure this is connected back here. All right, we're good there. All right, that's connected, that's connected. All right, cool. All right, let's see here. All right, inflate the flotation bladders until most of the wrinkles are out of the cover. If any twists develop, stop, deflate the bladder, straighten it within the skin, and reinflate 
Close the valve covers tightly. You may need to add or release some air if you travel between low and high elevations or if the temperature changes. Always take out some air before leaving your float tube in the car. The heat can expand the air in the bladders quite a bit. All right, let's, all right, so I say, till most of the wrinkles are out. All right, wrinkles are out. All right, most of those are out, that wrinkle's out. Okay, that's good. That one's out, everything looks straight. Let's unzip this again, everything's straight. That's straight, that's straight, okay. Let's go back to this one. Make sure that's straight. Okay, that looks straight, that's straight, that's straight. Good, all right. Zip this back up. Careful not to get this liner into the zipper. It hasn't said zip it all the way up yet or fill it all the way up yet, so. Okay, all the wrinkles are out. All right. Slip the separator bar. Okay, connect the two spreader bar pieces together with the angled ends on both tube ends facing the same direction. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and close these now. this one okay so the instructions say our angled piece on bottom angled piece on bottom that's good make sure those are straight with each other all right not sure what that is get that off there okay connect the two spreader bar together with angled ends on both sides and face in the same direction slip the spreader bar into the fabric sleeve okay so before I actually put this in, I just wanted to let you know that if you know PVC, you know the edges can be sharp. And when this came in the box, the edges were very sharp and that would potentially cut through the fabric. So um, I went ahead and just took some sandpaper and rounded these edges off so they're smooth and not so sharp. And now we'll go ahead and uh, slip them into this cover as it's noted. All right, so not that end, so it must be this end. Okay, so there's some Velcro. All right, we'll slip it in. And most likely, I'm going to actually replace this piece with a single piece, not a two piece. Just to give it a little more sturdy and less potential for flex and breakage. Okay, so we'll insert it this end because the top angle of the 45 needs to be on the top of here, and this needs to be on the side of the uh, tube or the bladder, so we'll push that in. Zip or tighten that. Okay, now we'll put it in one side. Okay, put it in another side. Okay, and secure these onto the Velcros. Just like that. Okay. All right, did that. Now there are two backrest supports sewn to the back rest, other end. Be sure these buckles are clipped to their corresponding parts on the side of the pontoon. Adjust the length strap for comfort and seat back. Okay, cool. So that's done, that's done. All right, fishing rod holders. Okay, that's gonna be interesting. Where are the fishing rod holders? Okay, so the rod holders are these. So I guess it just, here this, okay, we are. I guess your rod just, uh, it's not really, a, I guess it's a rod holder. It's not really a vertical holder. It's more just to put them in here, lay it flat so it lays horizontally. Okay, so yeah, I'm not gonna like that. Here's your cup holder. Let's see how big these compartments are. And a Velcro here. Open that up. That's cool. Oh, it's even got a little zip compartment here. Probably for keys and, and a wallet or something. Wow, really big compartment. Okay, over on this side. Cool, looks like we have the same thing over there. 
Okay. I guess we'll go ahead and fill this thing all the way up now. All right. side aside for now okay now it's inflated now can get that seat probably about right there cool all right those are up there down all right let's put these latches backpack latches on that clips there one that's cool now, I'm not sure if I'll since this is so light I mean it's only like 10 pounds or less but since this thing is so light I highly doubt that after I'm done with uh, fishing this thing's gonna be soaking wet I highly doubt I'm gonna put it on my back because then my back's gonna be soaking wet so probably be able to find a different use for these straps but Cool at those hits like that. Okay, that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, that is your Cumberland float tube. Not bad for only 160 bucks. Cool. When it's winter and your legs are sitting in the harbor or sitting in the water and the water's like 55, 56, 57 degrees, and you're in there for a long period of time, that could get cold. And so I decided to buy some neoprene stocking foot chest waders. That's what it looks like. And again, the reason for the stocking uh, chest chest waders is because when you, I'll take, I'll just take them out just to show you. When you are, uh, putting your you, you don't want to put the I don't want to put fins over huge boot waders and so with the stocking waders this is how they come 100% waterproof insulated you're not gonna water shouldn't leak and then you put the fins right on top of the stockings so your legs don't get cold feet don't get cold nothing is cold plus you have your jacket on so a lot better than just regular uh, layered booties or I'm sorry layered waders or pants or waterproof pants, whatever uh, again chest waders stocking foot not a boot again thanks for watching take care see you on the water